Hi, I'm Trish and welcome to my women's online Bible study. Today we are covering Genesis chapters 17 through 19. So let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, please give me um, clarity to speak. Uh, give me wisdom and part to the hearer. Wisdom, uh, understanding, and knowledge of all your ways that we may walk upright in them. Uh, give me the wisdom to lead, um, instruct uh, with truth and without error. Uh, let the Spirit guide me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I am reading from the English Standard Version, um, Genesis chapter 17. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojourners, so, sojournings, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, as, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He is... Uh, he who is, sorry, he who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male throughout your generations, whether born in your house or brought with your money for, from any foreigner who is not of your offspring. But he who is born in your house and he who is brought with your money shall surely be circumcised. So shall my covenant be in your flesh an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin shall be cut off from his people. He shall... He has broken my covenant. And God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her and she shall become nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Shall Sarah, who is 99 years old, bear a child? And Abram said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, No, but Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant uh, for his offspring after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father 12 princes. And I will make him into a great nation, but I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this time next year. When he had finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. Then Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all those born in his house were brought with money, every male among the men of Abram's, Abraham's house. And he circumcised the flesh of, his, of their foreskins that very day, as God had said to him. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. That very day, Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised. And all the men of his house, those born in the house and those brought with money from a foreigner, were circumcised with him. Genesis 18. And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, O oh Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet 
and rest yourselves under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, quick, three sheas of fine flour kneaded and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. Uh, they said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, she is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you after this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed. <laughs> to herself saying, am I, after I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why does Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you about this time next year and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied saying, I did not laugh for she was afraid. He said, no, but you did laugh. Then the men set out from there. And they looked toward, down towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to set them on their way. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I have chosen him, that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done all, what, whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me. And if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, if I find at Sodom 50 righteous, righteous in the city, I will spare the whole place for their, their sake. Abraham answered and said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the 50 righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. Again, he spoke, and he spoke to him and said, Suppose 40 are found there. He answered, For the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose 30 are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak again, but this once. Suppose 10 are found there. He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham and Abraham returned to his place. Genesis 19, the two angels came to Sodom in the evening and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and bowed himself with his face to the earth and said, my lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, no, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly. So they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people of the la to the last man surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. Lot went out to the men at the entrance, shut the door after him, and said, I beg you, my brothers, do not, do not act so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters who have not known any man. Let me bring them out to you and do to them as you please. Only do nothing to these men, for they have come under the shelter of my roof. 
but they said, stand back. And they said, this fellow came to so sojourn and he has become the judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. Then, he, then they pressed hard against the man Lot and drew nearer to break the door down. But the men reached out their hands and brought Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck, and they struck with blindness the men who were at the entrance of the house, both small and great, so that they wore themselves out groping for the door. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here? Sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone you have in the city, bring them out of this place, out of the place. For we are about to destroy this place because the outcry against its people has become great before the Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and said to his sons-in-law who were to marry his daughters, up, oh, get out of this place for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But he seemed to his sons-in-laws to be jesting. As morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Oh, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. At least you be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he lingered. So the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him. And they brought him out and set him outside the city. And as they brought them out, one said, Escape for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills, lest you be swept away. And Lot said to them, Oh, no, my lords, behold, your servant has found favor in your sight. And you have shown me great kindness in saving my life, but I cannot escape to the hills, lest the disaster overtake me and I die. Behold, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Let me escape there. It is not a little one. It is, it is not a little one. Huh? And my life shall be saved. He said to him, Behold, I grant you this favor also that I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Escape there quickly, for I can do nothing till you arrive there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun had risen on the earth when light came to Zoar. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the valley and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. But life's wife behind him looked back and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. And he looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the valley. And he looked and behold, the smoke of the land went up like the smoke of a furnace. So it was, so it was that when God destroyed the cities of the valley, God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of, of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had lived. Now Lot went up out of Zor and lived in the hills with his two daughters, for he was afraid to live in Zor. So he lived in a cave with his two daughters, and the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is not a man on earth to come in to us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve offspring from our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father. He did not know when she lay down or when she arose. The next day, the firstborn said to the younger, Behold, I lay last night with my father. Let us make him drink wine tonight also. Then you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve offspring from our father. So they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. Thus both the daughters of Lot became pregnant by their father. The firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger also bore a son and called his name Ben Ami. He is the father of, a, of the Ammonites to this day. What's the reading of your word, God? Let it fill us up till we are able to eat of it again. If you are just here for the read through, thank you. Um, and the first, uh, uh, coming to read through with me <laughs> and I hope to see you again next time and if you are here for the um, uh, Bible study then stick around and we're going to dig right in. So starting from chapter 17 um, we have uh, the introduction of the circum the covenant of circumcision. So at this point God is making a uh, covenant with um, Abraham and he is changing he changed his name from Abram to Abraham. He also is going to uh, change Sarah's Sarai's name to Sarah um, 
and uh, promised them a son from the seed of uh, Abraham and Sarah from from their own body in their old age. Um, so the, this uh, circumcision is a uh, ritual of circumcision. Um, it is a it, the believers are consecrating the organ the organ of procreation. I like that it says that in my Bible study notes, and I use the Reformation Study Bible, and it is the uh, English Standard Version, and I was kind of oh, but that is a good thing. <laughs> um, and it says by the ritual of circumcision, old covenant believers consecrated the the organ of procreation. So by pulling back the flesh of the foreskin, um, uh, uh, they are consecrating uh, the, the the way that people are reproduced, and that is a sign of the covenant of believers in the Old Testament. Today in the the New Testament, we are baptized, so um, we can each individually become baptized uh, as men and women, but women. In that, in those uh, Old Testament times, were saved through um, a marriage to some a believer, or they came to believe uh, 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 through somebody else, or you know, moved into the household, or came to believe through the faith, and they were accepted in as believers by following the ways. But the men um, had to be circumcised, and uh, when the Lord uh, promises. Uh, um, and and and, and uh, Abraham does go on, go on in it ends the chapter of seventeen with him actually going through with it. Um, he obeys the Lord. That was a part of the um, covenant that he actually went. Th he he believed him. Uh, but when he uh, when the Lord uh, said to him that a child would be born to him, Abraham did laugh. So you always hear a lot of uh, different sermons on. Uh, Sarah laughed, um, and and Abraham laughed too. But when Abraham laughs here, he um he he laughs. Oh, I'm old. You know, my wife's old. We're past the that age. May Ishmael. He comes in after his laughter. He says, "Can May Ishmael be uh uh be right before you or accepted before you?" And the Lord says, "No. You know, he's going to bless Ishmael too, but." Isaac is the seed. It's going to come from Sarah, and this is it. And, and Abraham believes him. And we go jump over to 18, uh, where Sarah laughs. Uh, and Sarah laughs down in uh, 9 through 9 through 15. 8, uh, 9 to 18, 19 through 15. Uh, no, 18, sorry. 18, 9 through 15 is, is the contents of where um, Sarah is told, um, cause the angel, the Lord and two angels appear, uh, and, and they prepare a meal and set it before them. And, uh, at this point in time, uh, Abraham, uh, uh, the Lord, Sarah does the same thing that Abraham did. She laughs. She's like, oh, you know, I'm old. The manner of women is far from me. You know, she went through menopause. And, and so this is a, a miracle from the Lord. He reopens her womb and puts this seed of promise within her that Isaac, through, through Isaac, his sheep, you know, all the nations of the earth will be um, blessed. And uh, so she laughs. And, um, but when the Lord asked Abraham why she laughed, then she was afraid. So she, she says she's a, she she was afraid. I was she afraid? So she denied it. But the Lord corrected her and said, "No, you did, you did." So it's not saying that somebody should lie, but sometimes we do. We lie when we're afraid. We, we don't know what's going to happen. Like oh, you know. But she does end up believing, you know, um, and 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 walks up right with the Lord. So she she is uh, listed as a woman of faith in that. Then we move on to the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, so the Lord wants to, is, is, is contemplating telling Abraham what he's about to do. Then he decides to do it. So um, down in verses 22, throughout the end of the chapter, Abraham is um, going back and forth with interceding for Sodom, saying if, if it's 50 and 40, and he keeps taking off by fives and tens of, uh, until they get all the way down to the to ten, and the Lord, you know, departs from Abraham, uh, because um, Abraham is saying, if the Lord is righteous, I, surely He will not destroy an entire city for fifty wicked men. So the Lord is just saying back, no, I wouldn't do it for fifty, nor forty, no, all the way down to ten. And I guess Abraham, either Abraham said, hey. 
I, if it's not at least 10, then I'm not going to, you know, intercede for any more. Or either the Lord was saying that that was the cutoff point. It, it doesn't say. It just said at that point, the Lord went on his way. When he finished speaking to Abraham and returned his place. So we do know that there weren't even 10 people in that entire city who walked upright with the Lord. So moving on to uh, chapter 19, uh, the Lord uh, actually rescues Lot. So at this point in time, um, uh, the Lord is as uh, <laughs> the Lord has departed, and only the angel. It was his three at first, but now it's only saying the start of it is the two angels. They go down to to Sodom, and it is evening time at this point in time in the day. So uh, Lot was sitting in the gate, and he saw bow down to meet them, and he wanted them to come into his place and stay instead of sleeping out in the open square. They agree. Then some men come, all of the men, it says everybody, every man came and was trying to get them to come outside so that they can know them carnally, um, sexually, um, homosexual behavior with the men of that city. And um, Lot is not being a great dad here. He's like, oh no, it's so wicked. No, um, I'm going to offer my daughters. A lot of the people say that, uh, uh, try to like uh, twist that, but... He's not being a great father. You don't see, <laughs> but in his mind, he's thinking that that's less evil to send out his daughters and they do what you want to my daughters, but not my guests, you know, just to protect his guests, I guess. I'm not sure, but I, I, his, his solution was wicked too. So, <laughs> um, but the angels ended up blinding the men and, um, and he urges Lot, they, they urge Lot to, uh, get out of the city and to take um, all his loved ones, you know, his kids, his daughters, their husbands, just anyone to gather them up, his uh, Lot's wife, um, because they're about to destroy the city. And anyone um, you know, leave, for, go far away and don't look back. So he goes, he tries to tell his son-in-law he um, to come, but they just thought that he was joking. They And they didn't leave. So he ended up just leaving with his wife and his two daughters. His wife turned and looked back. And I, I think there's a lot to learn with her turning to look back. So when the Lord tells you something, and, and this is something to keep, it's the seriousness of it. When the Lord says, leave her, leave this place, and do not look back, don't look back. Do, do not look back. Because sometimes we tend to look back. We we look back, oh, I might have forgot something, or just to see, just to see what's going on. And and um, uh, she looked back and she turns into a pillar of salt. But before she looks back, uh, the angels take uh, uh, Lot and uh, uh, his wife to the edge parts of the city. And, and Lot's trying to decide where he wants to flee. And the angels even grant him that so that he goes over to Zor. Uh, he didn't uh, stay there. Uh, Wait, let's, let's wait. Let's back up let's, and stop at 23, 19 and 23. So they, the angels went at night uh, when the uh, at sundown. So now the sun has written uh, on the earth when uh, when light came to, to Zor and the Lord is now from heaven uh, raining down fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah and sulfur and fire out of heaven. Uh and he overthrew the cities and all of the inhabitants of them. And then that's when the wife looks back and she's turned into a pillar of salt. Um, and Abram, he gets up early in the morning and he looks over and he can see like the ash from the city uh, for that, that, that the Lord went to go and destroy. And so now Lot, he goes to Zor and lives in the hills. Um, uh, he, he leaves Zor. I knew he left. So he leaves Zor. And um, he go Zoar, uh, and I was just, I think it's my Midwest St. Louis twang here. <laughs> um, but uh, he leaves uh, Zoar, and uh, he he goes to the hills with his two daughters, because um, he was afraid to live there. After he asked to go there, now he's afraid, and he goes to the hills, and he's in the cave with his two daughters, and now um, his his daughters are concerned that. Um, uh, 
the, the name of their father is going to die out. They're saying that there aren't any men over the whole face of the earth. Of course, there's men over the whole face of the earth. They, he could have easily went to, you know, try to go and stay with Abram. Or uh, it, there, there are other men over the earth to where they didn't have to do this. And it shows the lack of uh, his him being a, a good father again here because he failed to find them daughters just because he was old. And so they get them um, completely you know, passed out drunk to where he doesn't even know what's going on. And, uh, and they, they obviously knew that this about their father, that if he, if they got him, um, uh, drunk to a point to where he wouldn't know what was going on, uh, the oldest goat went in and laid with him and she conceived. And then the youngest, the next day went and did the same thing. And she conceived the firstborn bore a son. I'm down at, um, verse 37 and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. And we know, do know that Ruth um, is a Moabite woman and that ends up being King David's grandmother. So it's uh, the line of Judah and it's the, that's the line that Jesus come from, comes from. And then the younger also bore a son and called his name Ben Ammi. He's the father of the Ammonites. Now, the Moabites and the Ammonites do um, uh, rebel against uh uh, the children of Israel. So they are going to, their seed and the seed of Isaac are going to uh, conflict, but when they are full nations over over the process of time, over hundreds of years here. Um, so, and that is it. <laughs> so bless your uh, word, Lord. And um, thank you for tuning in with me to go through scripture. And I hope to see you again. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and bring you peace both, both now and forevermore. Amen. And see you next time. Bye.